Let's continue our series of super quick Orca Slicer tutorials by talking about Layer Height. Layer Height. It has the ability to determine how fast your print's done, how good it looks, and how well resolved the tiny details are. But when talking about Layer Height, the first thing people often think about is speed. At least that's where my brain goes because I'm often running out of time or just generally impatient. Both mean I got speed on the brain. And using layer height is a good way to cut a lot of time off of our prints. By adjusting from a 0.14 to a 0.28 layer height on this nacho tester that we use on the channel so much, we can see that the print time goes all the way from 2 hours and 45 minutes down to 1 hour and 27 minutes. Now I want to disclaim that I'm referencing the total model print time and not the total print time. So we're not accounting for the machine warming up or any of the calibration, vibration compensation that happens before the print is actually started. This gives us a better comparison of model to model printing time. But why such a big reduction? All we did was change one little setting. Well, it makes more sense if you think about the model being sliced into individual layers. If we look at the slice for the coarse layer height, there's only 366 layers. Each individual layer is going to be taller, so that makes it cut through the model quicker with fewer layers. Whatever factor you adjust the layer height by is the factor that it's going to reduce the print time by. Conversely, when we have the fine layer setting, you can see that there's nearly 750 layers in that cut. With double the passes and double the layers, the tool head has to spend twice as much time printing on the model. And that's why we get twice the time for the total print. So I hear you asking, why not just do super chunky layers all the time? You can print so fast. Yes, speed is a consideration, but it's not the only consideration. If we look at the quality of the surface finish between these two models, you can tell there's clearly a winner in terms of which is more aesthetically pleasing. The finer layer height produces a surface finish that's much smoother and far nicer to look at than the coarse layer setting. This is because the layers are physically so much smaller that the ridges don't appear nearly as evident when you look at it. It kind of seems intuitive enough and self-explanatory, but this is something that really presents depending on your material. So especially when you use silk materials, you're going to see this effect a lot more. With the shiny materials like silks, the surface finish is so shiny that any imperfection is going to be amplified quite a bit. Now with the fine layer heights, those imperfections aren't as big of a deal, and they can more easily be absorbed by the rest of the model. But when you have the coarse layer heights, those imperfections are going to stick out quite a bit more, especially when you have a shiny material. But even beyond that, the resolution of the model is a huge consideration. Similar to your surface finish, resolution is something that needs to be taken into account depending on your model. If you've got a lot of fine details in your model, you don't want a super coarse layer height. See, the layer line is effectively the smallest unit that your machine can replicate. And if your model has a lot of fine details, in fact, if your model has details that are finer than your layer height, those details aren't going to present when it prints. Your slicer may not even recognize them at that course of a layer height. This is a little bit easier to visualize when you look at a curved surface. So we're going to slice this curve at coarse layer heights and fine layer heights. When these curves are introduced in the plane of the layer lines, we get this stair-stepping effect. The finer the layer lines, the less evident the stair-stepping is, the more gradual the stair-stepping occurs. The coarser the layer lines, though, the more obvious these stair steps are. This is how we illustrate what resolution means in your layer height and what details get lost when you crank the layer height up to a million. But ultimately, you need to decide model by model what layer height's going to be suitable. If you've got a big square blocky model or if it suits the aesthetic, layer height's not really a consideration. Crank it up to forever. It doesn't matter. But if you've got something that's more organic and it has a lot more curves that need to be replicated more accurately, you're probably going to want a fine layer height and you just have to bite the bullet on speed. But what layer heights are you typically running? Because personally, I run a pretty chunky 0.28 layer height with a 0.4 nozzle. And that seems to work for just about everything except for a couple of fine exceptions. Drop by our Patreon page, it's totally free, if you want to join in on the discussion or generally connect a little more directly. Bye.